In our lecture series, we've seen many instances where we had to solve a quadratic trigonometric equation, where we had a quadratic polynomial in terms of cosine or a quadratic polynomial in terms of sine, all right? Um, what if you have a mismatch, though? Like here, you have 4 cosine squared of x plus 4 sine x minus 5 equals 0. It kind of feels like a quadratic term because you have your linear term, your constant term, and your quadratic term right there. But there's this mismatch. You have cosine squared and a sine right there. If you had cosine squared and a, so and a cosine, that'd be great. If you had sine squared and a cosine that or and a sine, that'd be great, too. Uh, so it's the mismatch. We have a cosine and a sine. What do you do with that? Well, we want to switch from one to the other. And there are some options, and basically the best options come from the Pythagorean relationship. Now, we don't want to switch the linear term because the linear term would be something like the following, sine of x is equal to plus or minus, depending on the quadrant, the square root of 1 minus cosine squared, which that does not reduce. Otherwise, we would do it. Introducing square roots into the problem would be a big no-no. Yikes. Um, another possibility we could try would be to use like the half angle identity or something, but no, 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 that would even be worse. Um, but the, the Pythagorean identity is where the money's at. We don't want to switch the linear term. We want to switch the quadratic term because the, the quadratic polynomial cosine squared plus sine squared equals 1. We can solve for the, for the quadratic term we have. So solve for cosine squared. We'll get cosine squared is equal to 1 minus sine squared like so, and we can make this substitution in for cosine squared, thus we would switch from cosine squared into a sine squared, and that's the setting that we want. So replace the cosine squared with one minus sine squared, like so, we keep the four sine, we keep the negative five, of course, equals zero. Um, notice that we're trying to solve this on the domain zero to two pi, so that clearly is telling us we wanna solve this equation for radians, just one rotation of the unit circle here. Distribute the 4, we're going to get 4 minus 4 sine squared plus 4 sine of x minus 5, like so. Um, combine like terms, you end up with 4 sine squared x plus 4 sine x. And so the constants will combine here. You get 4 minus a 5 there, so you get a negative 1 equals 0. I'm going to divide both sides by negative one. I don't like the leading coefficient be negative. It just frustrates me a little bit. So maybe I'm just too much of an optimist there. But if you divide everything by negative one, you'll get four sine squared minus four sine x uh, plus one now equals zero. Now we have to decide, do we want to factor this thing? Do we want to use the quadratic formula? Uh, that decision is possible, of course, here. Now I noticed that the first term has a coefficient of four. The last one's a positive one, those are both perfect squares, right? This is two squared and this is one squared, which makes me think this possibly is a perfect square trinomial. Notice the middle term, basically I'm utilizing the factorization here that a plus b squared equals a squared plus two ab plus b squared, like so. Or in this case, I guess we're taking a minus b squared is equal to a squared minus two ab plus b squared, like so. So does the middle term match up? Um, so this should look like negative 2 times 2 times 1 times sine of x. Uh, that's exactly what we have right there. 2 times 2 is 4. So this does factor as a perfect square trinomial. So we're going to end up with the factorization 2 sine x minus 1 quantity squared equals 0. Um, if you didn't see that, if you tried the usual like guess and check or reverse FOIL method, you'd end up with like 2 sine x minus 1 times 2 sine x minus one. The point is you'd get a repeat there. Um, and so really there's only one case to consider. What happens when two sine x minus one equals zero? So we'll consider that exact situation. Add one to both sides, we get two sine x equals one. Uh, divide both sides by two, we end up with sine of x equals one half. So sine is positive in the first quadrant and in the second quadrant. Uh, in the first quadrant, x would be pi 6, or 30 degrees, but we're solving with radians here. And then in the second quadrant, we need the angle that references pi 6, which would be pi take away pi 6, or 5 pi 6, which would be, of course, the solution in this situation. So if you have a quadratic equation with trigonometric functions where there's a mismatch between sine and cosine, use the Pythagorean equation to convert from to convert the quadratic term to be compatible with the linear term, and then you can solve this like any other quadratic uh, trigonometric equation.